Chapter 36 Jade in Kensington Someone's in my room. I can almost feel them leaning over me. How did they get so close without me waking up? I resist screaming and jumping. Maybe they'll leave me alone if they don't know I've woken up. Probably not. Where is my knife? My heart races when the person leans closer to me. Hot metallic breath warms my face. The person breathes in my face three times. Wet lips touch mine. My eyes fly open. I panic and throw my hands out against the woman's chest. She screams from shock as she falls back and to the floor. I quickly find the knife and jump out of my blankets. Stay where you are. I muster up the sternest tone I can. I grab the flashlight and shine it at her. I know her. I've seen her in a couple of dreams. Callie, I think I remember, is her name. She has a dark liquid trailing down her chin. My gut twists from the iron taste drifting in from my lips. What do I do? She seemed like a friend in my dreams, but she was just, I don't know exactly what she was doing. She was kissing me. Why was she kissing me? My head feels light. I think I'm going to pass out, but I hold my stance until the faint feeling passes. What were you doing? My voice squeaks at the beginning. Get it together. What are you? She slowly draws her sleeve across her chin to wipe off the dark liquid. What a strange question to ask. Human. Why did you kiss me? You can't be completely human. She taps her head. I started the process, you shouldn't have broken the paralysis. Not completely human. Could she be talking about my visions? Am I not human? What were you doing to me? Kissing you. Callie. I shouldn't have said her name. She hasn't told me yet. Not missing a beat I continue my questioning. Why were you kissing me? You're a prophet. Well, shit that could have been dangerous for both of us. How strong are your visions? What kind are you? She jumps up from her spot on the floor. She no longer looks frightened. Should I take her actions to mean I shouldn't be concerned about her? Here touch me. She offers up her hand. I'm not. She cuts me off. It's the only explanation that makes sense. You already know me. Only my friends call me Callie. She moves slowly towards my dresser before she hops up to sit on it. So, it's rude that I don't know your name. Jaden. I put the knife down to my side. So, you want to explain to me why you kissed me, and why whatever it was you were doing didn't work. She points to her chin. You have some blood there. I push down a gag. The iron taste leaching into my mouth is unsettling. I think the danger is over so I set the flashlight down facing up and wipe my mouth. She shrugs her shoulders. I don't know how much you know. I'm having this conversation for the first time. So am I. Well, I'm Callista, Callie to my friends. I'm a succubus, and I was trying to eat some of your soul. My breathe should have kept you sleeping, so my blood could help loosen up your soul so I could drink it. I was only going to take a couple of years off your life and leave the rest for you, but someone decided to have a mental power that could have killed us both if you hadn't woken up. So, because I have visions that would have killed us. There isn't much point in trying to fool her anymore. Callie pauses to scrutinize. Don't they teach you anything anymore? What family do you belong to? I don't know what the last name was. My mom didn't seem psychic and she died when I was a kid, never mentioned anything and I've only met my birth dad a few times. He asked if I kept a dream journal once, so maybe that's what he was getting at. But I never thought to ask what his last name was. I've kind of had to figure this dream vision thing out on my own. I just kept having dreams that would then end up happening. But sometimes they also don't happen. 
You're the second person I've ever told about it. My stepdad threatened to send me to a mental institution before I rescinded, told him I was joking and asked him as a social experiment. I lay it all out. Maybe she can make sense of it all. She seems to know much more than I do. And if we end up friends, then you're supposed to share these sorts of things. She hops off the dresser. Ouch, I'm sorry. Can I hug you? Is that weird? I'm hesitant to let her hug me because I don't do hugs and I've just met her. She could still try to kill me, you never know what can happen when you change things. My hesitation is exactly the moment she needs to hug me whether I agree to it or not. I close my arms around her and awkwardly pat her back. She lets go after what seems like an awkwardly, inappropriate long time. You didn't answer my question. I set her back on track. Yes. She pauses. What was the question again? Why would it have killed us? Right, well I attach to your third eye, go in through your dreams and suck your soul out. But because you're a prophet your head works differently. You have natural defenses that stop anyone from getting into your head. My soul sucking works through your head and it's an all or nothing deal. If I had attached myself to your third eye it would have meant instant death for me. Might have killed you as well. Sa, so, where are we supposed to go from here? That explains a little. I guess it's helpful to know that people can't get into my head. It's a little disheartening to know that an attempt means I could die too. I don't know. At some point, we meet up with a group led by James Ellsworn, but first don't know how far away that is. I stop myself from revealing anything else. It might be better if you forget that. If we try to do it when we aren't supposed to then it won't happen, and other things may not happen as I've seen them. Uh so, yeah maybe, just, do what we would have done normally. Without any knowledge of what should happen. Loot your house for some essentials and go on to the next place. Once done, we would go back to Safeway for the night. Got it. I unveil my bag to her. She chuckles a little. So, if you didn't see this happen, how do you know if it didn't happen exactly the way it is now? She has a good point. I don't know. I have no idea how this works, but I do know that a few things in my life have gone differently just because I knew something is supposed to happen. Whether I consciously decided to change events or not. I gather a few extra belongings. It could be something like a test. I see a vision about me marking a multiple choice science test, so I know what questions are going to be on the test and the answers. So, without even studying, I get a better mark on the test than what I did originally. Cheater. She accuses rightly. We go up the stairs. I can't help it. I don't choose what I have visions of. It's a sad excuse of reality, but it's the only thing I've got. I have a car full of things. I can follow you to Safeway. Sure. I just have to get a couple of things from next door and we can be on our way. I don't think anything of it until she goes towards Lucas's place. Things click together. Is Lucas at Safeway? Yes. Oh my god. Did you just see something? She's too excited and it's weird. Not now. My visions happen in my dreams. That dream I said where we meet up with a group, Lucas was there too. It was you me, and him meeting up with a group on the road. We walk into Lucas's house. His watch display is in his room. This way. I lead the way to his bedroom. It doesn't take me long to find the display in the dark. I grab the top watch. Did he say which one he wanted? Top shelf. He said stuff, but mostly I caught that it was his most expensive one. So you dream, eh? That's rare. She says. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, when he talks about his watch stuff it all sounds like gibberish to me too. I completely get it. We walk out of the room. Did he say he wanted anything else? 
Nope, just the watch and a thing from the black car. That's not going to happen. She turns around and looks at me for further answers. I stole that one a few days ago and it didn't make it back home. Did you crash it? She smiles big. No. It's nearly out of gas and near Alberta Beach. She walks us both out the front door. My car is in the driveway, while hers is in front of Lucas's house. I'll follow you. I press the lock button to make the lights flash. We walk to our cars. I unlock the doors and throw the bag into the back seat. I get in and back up. Callie wait for me to write my car before driving away. Safeway is on the edge of town. It's in the same parking lot as the Canadian Tire in my dreams. I shudder at the memory. Hopefully, it was just a dream, either way, I'm not going in there. I rebel against the law and park in the handicapped parking spot. Should I bring my bag in? I mean, I don't think we'll be staying here very long. We'll need supplies, and I'd rather not lose everything here. You think something happens here? Like a fight or something? I don't know what happens. I mean, I know we meet up with that group when there is snow on the ground, but the road is still pretty clean. But I didn't recognize anything around us, so I think we were in a different town, and were with that group in Banff too, but there was snow everywhere at that point. I'll bring in what I found. You bring Lucas's watch and leave everything else in here. I'll take the keys. I hand over the keys. I leave the car and wait for Callie to catch up on my side of the car. She leads me to the front doors. We immediately get inside. That's a security issue. I try to open up the second set of doors, but it's locked. Well, I guess that works well enough. Callie knocks on the door five times. I back away to sort of hide behind her a little. Harry, a friend that graduated last year, comes to the door. I guess I don't have to worry about it being someone I don't know. Jaden? He says after he unlocks and opens the door. Harry? I echo his tone. Sweetheart, I go by Carrie now. He, I guess, she says. The cross-dressing had been a semi-normal thing for Ha Harry. I had known Harry as this flamboyant gay guy that was in grade 12 when I was in grade 10. We took a comm class together and he was in my group for one of the projects. He graduated last year and we had lost touch. I don't know if this transgender change happened before the end of the world or after, but either way good for her. Carrie. I repeat. She passes Callie and gives me a big hug. Sweetheart, I was so worried about you. Where have you been? Carrie, let's get inside. Callie interrupts. We pass through the inner doors. I see we have attracted a small crowd. Who's she? A stern voice says. This is my girlfriend, Jaden. You don't have to worry about her. She's harmless and the smartest person I have ever met. She puts her arm in mine and pulls me to the other side of the store. How have you been? Where have you been hiding? Did you have any trouble? I look behind me. Callie is talking with a few people at the door, Lucas is there now. I trust Carrie, but I didn't want to break away from Callie. I hope both of them will find me later. The key being, Carrie wasn't with us in my visions. I haven't seen her at all. This means that she isn't a large part of my future. Whatever that ends up meaning. Callie and Lucas have been in multiple dreams, spanning some timeline points throughout winter. My focus needs to be on them. I need to stay with them. I need to make sure that happens. If it doesn't, it's likely I'd be working off of an unknown timeline. I've been good. Reading mostly. It's been, what, two weeks since the attack? I've spent most of that in my house. I tried to go to my grandma's house, but that didn't work so well. And your father. The word father is said with disgust. 
I haven't seen him since before the attack. Good. She smiles and shakes her head. She never did like my dad. Due to his homophobia and an unannounced visit to work on homework, she saw the side of him that he doesn't normally show the public. Mentally, I guess. What would he think of her now? Would I get another conversation about making sure I don't let her turn me gay? But now it'll be, make sure she doesn't turn me trans. Doesn't matter now, does it? He's probably dead. Have you been here the whole time? I ask. Yes, most of us have been. Anyone that was in the store shopping at the time just shut the doors, turned the lights off, and stayed here. We've ventured out a few times, but it seems safer this way. She leads me to the other entrance and into the employee-only stairs. We go up and into the staff break room. There are a few more people here. Hey, I want you all to meet my girl Jaden. Hi. I give a short wave. I don't want to do the awkward introductions, but I guess it's necessary. Said. Fatima. Jackson. Alice. Jose. And this is my boyfriend, Mark. Carrie introduces him. I shake his hand because he put his own out. Hi, I say a bit meekly. Hey. So, how long have you known Carrie? He tries to make conversation with me. Mark motions to the couch he had just been sitting on. Carrie and he settle cuddle together. I sit on the other side of the couch to give them their space. A year, about. We met in comm class last year. We were in a group together to do a project on life after high school. I explain. Is life what you imagined it would be after high school? He questions further. Actually, I'm still in high school. But, no this was not part of the project. I say. That project was awful. Carrie scowls. How so? Mark asks. I answer. It was like, you graduate high school, now what? So, we were given a package of tasks that we had to complete. It was broken down into the first year, and up to five years. So like the first year, you had to buy a car, go off to college, and move out of your parents' house, and for some dumb reason go on a vacation when you were already in so much debt from all that, and you had to go somewhere out of the country, and we had to find real-life examples of things, and saying we already own this or my parents are giving it to me, or garage sale item or all do without was not an option. So, like we had to find a car online and grab the pricing details from that. Find an apartment for rent and clip the article for that. Get the pricing for the courses you would take in school. Pick out the dining table you want. On and on. So basically, despite the project trying to be realistic it ended up being a project about how much debt can you accumulate. I ended up 40,000 in debt in my first year, and 300,000 in debt by year 5. I was one of the cheapest ones too. There were a few people who hit a million dollars. At least it was giving perspective to some people. He says. I can see his point. No, because if high school students need that much perspective, they have bigger problems. Jaden, where is my car? Lucas booms into the room and heads straight for me. Hey, Lucas. How are you? I evade his question. I have your watch. I hand him the watch. He immediately puts it on his wrist. Where's my car? He asks again. I had to take it. People broke into the house, so I took it to my grandma's house. There were people there, and they took the keys. The neighbors gave me a different car to take home, cause I'm pretty sure yours caught on fire or had a few bullet holes or something but it was pretty much out of gas anyway. I don't know how I would have gotten it back here. He looks angry. Stunned. Shocked. I can't read him. Say that again. I took it a few days ago. 
People broke into my house, so I had to get away. I took it to my grandma's house, but when I got there there were a bunch of strangers there. They took the keys because they didn't trust me. I helped the neighbors attack the house to free some hostages. There were bullets exchanged and someone set the house on fire. The neighbors gave me a different car to take home. I have everyone's attention now. They stare. Are you okay? He finally says. Yes. I'm fine. I smile to let him know I'm okay.